Welcome back to TMZ Sports. I'm Mike Babcock here with the man of the week, the guy who was in the biggest fight in the entire world, Dustin Poirier. Dustin, thank you for joining the show. What's going on, brother? Oh, not too much, man. Another fight week here in Las Vegas. Thanks for having me. Another fight week, but another big fight week. Obviously, uh, you know people are, are very well aware of the storylines. You and Connor, you fought six, seven years ago. Connor won that one. January 2021, though, you put it on Connor, knocked him out in the second round. Here we are, uh, the trilogy fight. So I, I got to ask the standard question. First of all, off the jump here, how are you feeling? You look good. You look ready to go. How are you feeling? Uh, only a few days away, Dustin. Feeling great, man. Um, had another great training camp. No injuries coming into this, so that's always good. I feel good. I'm ready to rock. Now, last time you and Connor uh, were really friendly with each other. There wasn't much trash talk as opposed to the first fight. Obviously, you guys were going back and forth. Do you expect that to be different the third time around, Dustin? Will he not be as friendly as he was in January? Of course. I, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious. Leading up to this one, he's been talking a lot and being crazy and stuff. But, you know, uh, the good thing is, like, I'm more mature in my career than where I was in that first one. So it really bothered me. But now it's just... It's whatever. Would, yeah. would you rather him talk crap? So at least it, it's, you know, your focus, you go in there and you, you try and hurt him and that's it. it. Does it almost complicate things when you're buddy, buddy on stage with him? Not for me, man. Once that bell rings, it's uh survival of the fittest in there. So whether it's talking back and forth or handshakes, you know, before the fight, when we get in there, it's business always. You know, you were so dominant in the second fight. We know about the leg kicks, about uh, some of the strikes you landed. I look in Vegas, though. I look at the, the betting lines, and they still have you as an underdog. I know this is not your first rodeo. You've done this a million times. But does that, uh, somewhere inside, does that upset you to see that even after you dominated this guy only uh, five months back, that here you are, underdog again? Not at all. I think, uh, you know, it's a very dangerous opponent. One mistake. And you, when you're fighting a guy like Connor, you know, it could be it could be end of the night. So um, just like the trash talk, that is what it is. That's all noise. I have no control over that stuff. You know, you had so much success with the leg kicks last time, but clearly he's going to go and he's going to try and make sure you can't beat his leg up anymore. What adjustments do you then make, uh, Dustin, to make sure that you do have some advantage somewhere if he's not going to let you chew up his front leg anymore? If the legs kicks are there, I'll take them. You know, that, that wasn't really the, 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 the focus going into that last fight. It was just something that presented itself in the heat of battle. And uh, I just kept going with it and eventually paid off. But the, the, the game plan is to win, you know, however that needs to be, however I need to go about it to make that happen. You know, there was so much talk with the, uh, with the donation and the donation that didn't happen. Is all that water under the bridge now, or is is there a piece of you that's still upset that uh, obviously charity is a big part of your life, and that would have been a, a heck of a nice donation, I'm sure, for your organization? Any bad blood, or is that all water under the bridge now with Connor? That's, that's, water, that's water under that's water under the bridge. You know, the charity stuff um, that I do and that I'm so involved with, that's not my money. That's the people's money. And he ended up making a donation to the Boys and Girls Club, so it's a victory, you know? Yeah. Right. Charity, in the boys charity, and girls club in your area. The right. In the yeah, boys exactly. and girls club charity in your area. So it's helping the kids uh, that, that obviously are, are near and dear to your heart. For sure. And, and uh, we've teamed up with that exact uh, organization before and they do great things. So it's a, it's a win. That's awesome. And uh, in closing, sucks, it right? sucks that I had to twist, twist his arm and, and put myself in, under fire and, and make things public like that. But we, we got to take care of and, and uh, the kids are going to have a lot of help with that. You know, there's a there's a, a a guy with a belt strapped around his waist. So Charles Oliveira looking for uh, his next opponent. Is the plan at least to go in there, beat Conor McGregor at UFC 264, and then fight for that belt and and, and get that title uh, in your next fight? In the back of my head, that's the plan. But always like maturing through the sport, I've realized that I have to focus on right now. You know, my hands are full Saturday night, and thinking about Charles and thinking about the title doesn't even matter until Saturday night happens. So. I don't, I don't like to get too far, you know, ahead of myself with that stuff. But that's, if we're writing a story perfectly, that's what happens. In, in closing, what would the message be to Conor McGregor a couple days before you step in there? I don't have anything to say to him. See you Saturday. That's it. We'll all be watching. Dustin, thank you so much for always doing the show. I always appreciate your time, brother. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys.